Hello, we're now into the third and final of the three training videos. And this one today is going to focus on what to do with the ripple effect mapping outputs once you have them. As we've mentioned before, this training here is to accompany the paper that was published in BMC Medical Research Methodology earlier in 2022. And you can find additional in-depth information in the paper. And all being well, these videos will provide some alternative content to what is included there. From this video, there are several things that we hope you're going to be able to go away with. The first is on how to identify what we have termed impact pathways. Um, the second is how to make use of those impact pathways in order to analyze the data. We then go on to talk about how to actually make some of those findings coming from the analysis of the ripple effect mapping outputs much more meaningful. And we've got several practical considerations when analyzing and reporting the ripple effect mapping outputs. So there are two main steps to the analysis of the ripple effect mapping outputs. The first is the identification of what we refer to as impact pathways. And the second is a content and or a thematic analysis of the content within these impact pathways. And we're going to go through all of this in the next 10 minutes or so. So the first part is about the identification of impact pathways. And we're drawing on a previous example. Here you can see that we identified the beginnings of two impact pathways. The first one is about the establishment of a steering group. And the second one is about the need for female instructors within a leisure centre. Now these pathways are simply chains of connected actions, activities and impacts. And the nice bit about these impact pathways and within this example here is that they're all interconnected. When we zoom out, though, a little bit further and going back to the ripple effect mapping output that we've shown previously, we within this identified 19 of these impact pathways. And this is where the purpose of these pathways is really clear. If we didn't identify them, it can be hard to know where to start with the analysis. Another thing to mention here is that there are no right or wrong pathways. So it comes back to the purpose of them. They're really there to help with the analysis, first and foremost. Now, we have lots of these pathways within this example. And so as you might expect, these different pathways overlap with each other. And this is quite nice because it shows the interconnectedness between so much of the work that's being done locally and also the impacts that are associated with that work that's been done. And another good thing is that we don't necessarily need any fancy software to be able to do this. So we created these pathways using PowerPoint. We imported um, a copy of the ripple effect mapping output as a PDF. And we then simply use boxes with different colors to uh, go through and identify what the content was within those various pathways. With your impact pathways identified in the outputs, we then move on to the second major step, which is coding the pathways. And here we can work sequentially through the impact pathways, probably from left to right, and we start to apply labels or codes to the content that's sitting within each box. And we start asking the question like, what is this particular piece of information within the box telling us about? And we're trying to apply a very concise label to that to help describe the information within it. And if you're new to coding, then there might be some additional resources that perhaps we can point you towards or some training materials that we can point you towards. But back to the coding of the ripple effect mapping outputs, we also need to know that we don't have to code everything that sits within them. The idea is that we use a set of codes to describe what's going on within the output. So, for example, we might code this multi stakeholder event as a catalyst event or we might code these two behavior change workshops as exploratory events. And you can also see here how we've applied some codes to other information within the ripple effect mapping output. And we try and use the same codes wherever possible because it can help us to understand and identify patterns within these outputs. And we can also apply more than one code to the information within say one of these boxes, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner. And sometimes too, we need to read between the lines when coding. So we're trying to understand what the output's telling us about. And sometimes it isn't always explicit. 
And in order to be able to read between the lines, it can actually be really helpful, therefore, to make sure that you were in the ripple effect mapping session in the first place. And if you weren't able to be there or, or you aren't able to be there, then you can record the conversations from those ripple effect mapping sessions so that you can understand the wider context or the wider conversation that sits around these ripple effect mapping outputs being produced. So there are different ways in which we can think about um, the generation of codes. We can either use a predefined framework or a theoretical model. For example, in the guide by Scott Chasden and their colleagues, they use something called the community capitals framework. Others might include things, say, like the behavior change wheel. Or alternatively, and this is what we did, was we used a data led approach. We wanted to see what was in the data without applying a predefined framework um, to it. So either approach is fine, and both of these come with strengths and limitations. So, for example, using a predefined framework might make the process of coding perhaps a little quicker, but going by the data might allow us to have a bit more of a nuanced understanding of what's within those ripple effect mapping outputs. You then need to have a think about what the most appropriate software might be to analyze the outputs. And in the past, we've used something called NVivo. NVivo can be really helpful because it allows you to upload the PDFs of your ripple effect mapping outputs. And here we've got one with um, some of our impact pathways identified. And you can then highlight and code sections of the output and all of the codes will appear on the left hand side. And these are some of our ones here, as you can see, it's like quite a long detailed list. And you'll see then that these codes can actually be grouped together into some of the themes. So in this example, you can see that we've got, I don't know, five or six different themes there, which include things like the impacts, the mechanisms, the organizations involved. They're some of our like higher level themes. If we go back though to the example and we zoom in a little bit more on the codes that we have, one of the other useful things about NVivo is it allows us to start seeing how many times certain codes have been used. And you can see there down the right hand side that some of them have been used 10, 12 times. And that helps us to build up a little bit of a numerical understanding of also the content within um, these outputs. And that can be really quite useful if you're reporting to or publishing to people who like some numbers, as well as other people who might be much more interested in the, the qualitative content within these ripple effect mapping outputs. So as you've seen, and we're going back a few steps here, but as you've seen, like from the ripple effect mapping workshops that you've run, you might then create a digital output, which looks something a little bit like this. And we're here getting into how do we really report on this kind of information? How do we make it more meaningful? Now, these outputs in and of themselves can be quite useful because they can highlight the complexity and the amount of work and the impact that has been achieved within a given time. But through the use of some other methods and through the use of, say, content and thematic analysis, we can make them much more useful um, and, and meaningful for inclusion within a report. But just using these outputs, we can actually pull out stories and bring to light some of our themes. And we do this in a similar way to say when we pull out quotes from an interview. So just in this example here, we were able to highlight through a story how community residents worked with local organizations to offer a cycling course to local community members. But it's also, I mean, that in itself doesn't look overly appealing. And so it's also possible to make these stories look a little bit nicer and easier to work through. So, for example, here we can um, highlight these illustrative pathways and we can present them away from the ripple effect mapping output for, say, simplification or presentation purposes. So we've just pulled out one impact pathway. Another thing that we can do is here we've pulled out two illustrative impact pathways and we were able to include these in a report to just demonstrate the type of information that can sit within a ripple effect mapping output. Now we showed this slide previously in the first video, but this is an excellent example for the type of insight that we might glean from a thematic analysis. And here we can highlight some of the main themes from the analysis that we did. Now I'm not gonna talk through all of these in any depth, but some of the main themes that came from our analysis were that we're able to pull out 
um, examples of how there was collaboration between people or we're able to uh, demonstrate how there was a change in how people think, talk and act with regards to say complex issues. People are also able to generate new funding. And we might also be able to demonstrate how the work of one project might benefit the strategic agendas of others. So we could demonstrate how physical activity might contribute towards mental health outcomes. But then as we also showed earlier, some of the ripple effect mapping outputs can be quantified through the use of a content analysis. So these are just some more examples um, from the results that were included um, within a project that we'd evaluated. And this combination of findings, both the thematic ones that were on the previous slide and the numeric ones like we're showing here, can really help to satisfy a wide range of different stakeholders. So if you want to have a look at how this was written up in a report, then please see the evaluation of We Can Move on the ArcWest website. And these are only some examples, and we're sure that there will be lots of other ways of reporting the findings from ripple effect mapping too. So as Scott Chasden and his colleagues have encouraged others to do, we would also encourage people to adapt and refine the method, but also to adapt and refine the way in which we present and report the outputs that come from this, so that it all meets the needs of your own work. So in summary, a good starting point for the analysis is to become immersed in the ripple effect mapping outputs, get to know what's inside of them. And you can then go on and start to identify the impact pathways. But just remember that the primary purpose of those pathways is to help the analysis of the outputs further down the line. We then go on to systematically code those impact pathways. And here we can either be guided by the data or we could be guided by a pre-existing theory or a model and we then generate themes within the codes. And finally, we can try and identify the most suitable way of presenting the results for your audience. And as I just said previously on the, on the slide before, as with the method itself, you're probably going to find different ways to innovate and ensure that the findings are really, really meaningful for your particular audience. We just want to say a really big thank you for engaging with these training videos and we hope that you found them useful and interesting, engaging. But if you do have any further comments or any questions, then please do feel free to get in touch with either Jen or myself via email or say on Twitter. Thank you all very much.